Welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from the Carpathian Basin here in Central Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far. This is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. And in about 90 minutes, we will have an all chat class where everybody can join the chat which will focus on the task one writing of the academic IELTS. But again, in this class, we are focusing on uh, reading. Now, this passage is actually coming from our general IELTS exams, but it's a reading passage three. And reading passage three in the general IELTS is pretty much identical to the reading passages in the academic IELTS. So uh, it's useful for both academic and for general IELTS students. Hi, Pleetsy. Hi, Abhishek. Um, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com for IELTS success uh, for the academic version. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. And on both of those websites, we have loads and loads of materials to help you improve your communication skills as well as your English skills so that you can really bump up your scores and learn useful information that you can apply in your work, school, and life abroad. All right, students, just a quick look at those while we wait for a few more members. This is the academic version of our website here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join the premium package. And then for the general IELTS, it's a green background. And again, you can just click that big red button to join us there, get access to our HD videos, interactive quizzes, and much, much more. If you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and um, if you'd like to get our exams in uh, carbon copy, then uh, you can do so uh, from Amazon. Just search for A Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. Hi, Janiel. Hi, Ferdovs. Romaine, nice to see you in class. Hi, Ois. All right. So, uh, again, reading today and then task one. Uh, just again, a reminder, everybody, that there will be no class on Saturday this week. Okay? So... There's that one class missing from this week. Uh, otherwise, let's start to get right into our reading. Now, here is our reading for the day. Okay, um, so the reading starts with uh, a list of headings type question. Um, students, is this a little bit bright? Would you like it a bit darker or is this okay? Let me know. It's up to you. How's the, how's the brightness of the screen? It's a little bit tough uh, to tell. If it's too bright, let me know. Okay. I think it should be okay. But if it's too bright, let me know. Danielle says it's okay. All right. OS, one hour should definitely be enough to finish three sections. If you are running out of time to finish your reading, uh, then you need to work on um, your reading fluency and comprehension uh, along with the question strategies. So one hour should be plenty. Uh, think about it this way, students. Um, most native speakers, grade 12 or higher, uh, would finish the IELTS academic or general reading section comfortably in about 30 to 35 minutes while getting most of the answers correct. So they actually give you about twice as much time as it would take um, a grade 11 or grade 12 student to finish this in US, Canada or Australia. So you definitely should be able to finish. And um, of course, your goal is to get as many correct as possible. Okay, so we have a list of headings questions. Now, students, we're going to move nice and steady today. Uh, many of our members are already familiar with strategies, so we'll use uh, strategies in this class more than explain strategies, but you'll get them as long as you pay attention and um, just kind of follow along. So here we have list of headings. List of headings always before the passage, 
because they want you to do these questions while you read and they want you to look at them before you read the passage. Um, so of course, your first step is always to take a peek at the uh, title of the passage and then uh, try to think about, okay, um, what is it? What do I know about this topic? Uh, what can I visualize or imagine about this topic? Uh, so here it's tourism and the Cuban economy. Okay, so when you read this title, uh, what do you think of? So what is it? Why is it? How does it work? You have a little picture to help you use the picture. So what do you think is tourism and the Cuban economy? What is that about? So uh, take a couple ideas and guess at what this passage might include as far as information. Okay, Romain, I think you're saying paradise. Okay. So Ferdov says tourism is part of the economy. In what way, Ferdov? So try to be specific, students. So how is tourism a part of the Cuban economy? Um, what does it contribute? How does it work? Who are the tourists that go to Cuba? Leah says maybe uh, Cuba has a blockade on their economy. Okay, I'm not sure because it's tourism in the economy. So um, Cuban tourism and economy. Uh, I would guess that many uh, Americans vacation in Cuba, bringing US dollar, right? That makes a lot of sense because uh, of course, I think all of us know that uh, United States is uh, very close to Cuba, okay? I hope most, of, most everybody knows that part. Uh, make sure students that you are somewhat familiar with world geography, especially with uh, a lot of the key countries and bigger countries in, on the planet, okay? That's important. Uh, Ferdov says, and Canadians also. Yeah, it's true, Ferdov. Of course, Americans, there's 10 times as many, so. Uh, Cuban economy depends largely on tourism, says OS. Good, okay. Uh, Puiti says, maybe the good and bad effects on uh, Cuba, okay? Uh, maybe the good and the bad effects of tourism on the Cuban economy. Okay, all right, so you're starting to get some ideas, fine. Uh, spend about a minute uh, thinking about the title and what's included in the passage, at least 30 seconds. That will help you to understand the passage better. And then, you want to go through the questions so that you get an even more precise idea of what might be included. So I'm going back to the list of headings. I'm reading these because uh, this is definitely a question type that you want to read before the passage. And you want to try to paraphrase these uh options as much as possible while you're um, uh, reading these, okay? At home, do it with uh, pen and paper. In the aisles, just do it in your head. So a list of headings, uh, incentives to leave professional occupations. So motivation uh, to quit professional work. A currency on par with the American dollar. So a type of payment system that's equal to the US dollar a shock to a stagnant economy, um, a surprise to uh, an economy that's not changing, short on money, long on health, not enough cash, uh, but healthy people, a trade embargo causes problems, so um, sanctions creates difficulties, two monetary systems in one country, two types of currency in the same nation, Tourists outspend locals, causing food shortages. Tourists spend more money than the 
uh, indigenous people or the local citizens creating not enough food, ever increasing tourism, continuously increasing tourism, measures that can be taken to help the problem, um, ways to uh, solve the situation. Tourism causes food shortages, so tourism creates not enough food. Okay, so all I did there, uh, students, is I just read these and then to the best of my ability, I thought of different ways uh, to express these ideas. Firstly, that makes uh, me clear on what is here. And secondly, remember that this information will be paraphrased in the passage. Okay, so skimming and scanning for these it's not an effective strategy because you likely won't see the same words. Okay. All right. So is everybody clear what I did there? So I read each one and I thought of another way to say the same idea. Okay. It gives me a lot of idea about the passage and it will help me pick out the uh, correct answer. Okay. All right. So that's what you're doing in the actual exam. All right. Don't spend too much time on that maybe just about 30 seconds, okay? All right, and of course, when you're doing that quietly in your head and you're focusing, it's faster, all right? I'm happy that most of you got that. It's fantastic. Okay, and then um, I'm looking at the questions after the passage, and I see that this set here, it's uh, multiple choice. Multiple choice, I only read the question. I don't read the choices because the choices can confuse me and lead me down the wrong path. So I'm just going to focus my eyes on the question, which is not given as a reason for the stagnant Cuban economy. Okay. And I can paraphrase this as well. All of the following are given as reasons uh, for the uh, Cuban economy uh, not changing or remaining the same. Stagnant means that there's no development in the economy. Okay. Uh, and then uh, next one, what can be said about Cuban salaries? So uh, we can state that Cuban payment system or Cuban wages are Okay, so again, I'm paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is one of the most important strategies for success on the IELTS exam, especially for high band scores, okay? All right, and then the next set of questions, they're true, false, not given. And because it's true, false, not given, I don't read them because I don't know which ones are true. I don't know which ones are false or not given. So reading them will only create confusion I might be reading information that's not in the passage. And in fact, if I read these, I might even get some wrong ideas for the other questions because I'll think, oh, that was somewhere in the passage I was reading about it, but it wasn't. It was actually in the true, false, not given. So don't get the wrong idea. Don't read true, false, not given. All right, so I've done all of this. So I visualized the title. I went through the questions with the right strategies, and now I start reading, okay? So we're going to do this together. We're going to read together, so read with me. And if possible, please read aloud so you can hear yourself, okay? It's very effective for improving your listening, your speaking, and of course, your reading skills, okay? Yeah, and Jai Neal says, don't read true, false, not given. That's right, Jai Neal. All right, so uh, again, from the top, here we go. Always start with the title again, just to recenter, refocus yourself. Tourism and the Cuban economy. Cuba is a fascinating country because it is seemingly stuck in something of a time warp. Because of a trade embargo with the United States since 1958 and a strict communist and communitarian social system, economic growth has been virtually non-existent over the past several decades. In the past few years, however, the Cuban economy has undergone a significant change uh, due to the influx of tourists to the country. 
Unfortunately, the impact of the burgeoning tourism industry is not uniformly positive and its negative aspects have unexpected effects on the people far away from the tourist resorts. Okay, what do I need to do right now? So I'm reading, what do I have to remember to do? And some members that are regularly in these classes, and of course all of you who are using uh, the interactive courses on our website and read the strategies and review the right strategies, you should know what to do right now. Okay, so what should you do at this very moment in time in the real exam? Okay, so Beck John says, ask the question, what is this paragraph about? Very good, Abhishek. Very good, Beck John. Why are we doing that? So why are we stopping to ask this very critical question here? So right away we go. Uh, what is the... introductory paragraph about. So that's what we do. You're right. And why do we do that? So why would, yeah, Ois says you're answering the question. But why are we asking that, Puiti? And why are we answering? So Ois says um, a, a historical overview of recent... Cuban economy and changes. Okay, yeah. Okay. So why are we doing that? What's the purpose? What's the reasoning? Yeah, Abhishek, so that we can um, approximate the answer in the list of headings. That's right. Absolutely. So the reason we ask and answer the question, and OS, you did a good job there, is so that we can approximate our first answer. Yeah, so remember what I said, list of headings is the um, list of headings is the uh, one question that you have to answer while you're reading. So which one of these um, is talking about the suddenly changing Cuban economy in recent time. So which one is closest to this answer? Yeah, that's right, Ois, so to match. Okay, so sometimes you have to be a little bit critical. It's not a, you know, but the answer is there, I promise you, and it is kind of close to what we said. So um, changing Cuban economy uh, in recent times. Which one is the closest match to this? Romain says, I think it's number three, a shock to a stagnant economy. Okay. And Ois and Abhishek and Bekjan all agree. Jainil says it's five, a trade embargo causes problems. Uh, Jainil, this is only a part of that paragraph. It's not the complete idea of the paragraph. With list of headings, you're always looking for the complete paragraph. And those of you who chose three, you're absolutely right. Okay, it's the correct answer. Because a shock, you could say, is a change to a stagnant economy, uh, to Cuba's, sorry, Cuba's uh, recent economy. So this is the closest match, okay? to this um, statement that we said, this answer, okay, out of all of the choices there. Okay, hopefully everybody sees that, all right? Okay, what's the shock? It's tourism, right? Tourism, the change is tourism, and it's a shock to an economy that's being kind of stuck in time, okay? All right, good. So there on your answer sheet, you put three for paragraph A, and then you move on. Okay, let's keep going. Some of these paragraphs are more challenging than others, but the strategy stays the same. Uh, let's keep going. So uh, perhaps the most notable fact about the Cuban economy is that the average salary for most occupations, even professional occupations such as doctors and lawyers, is no more than 20 pounds per month. However, because of relatively strict price controls on products, 
as well as a strong social apparatus, education, health care, etc., and a history of monthly food rations from the state, the Cuban people perform quite well on international human wellness surveys and studies. Tourism, however, has begun to eat away at this delicately balanced system. Okay, um, what is this paragraph about? So give me the answer to this paragraph. Okay, what is it about? And again, when you're answering this question during the exam, it's in your head. Uh, you want to be as concise as possible. Abhishek says it's about money and food. Okay, I would um, say it a little bit differently, Abhishek. There's a system that's being affected here. Okay. Leah says it's about salaries. I think it's about more than, more than just salaries. Leah. So part of it is salaries, how much they make. But then there's also some information here about having social systems like free education, health. Um, there's uh, monthly food rations, so people are getting food. And then there's also some information here about um, them being kind of healthy as humans, but then tourism affecting that system. So Romaine says low financial standards, but healthy people. Um, Begjan says regulations on economies components. Puiti says it's about how there's an increase in the standard of living thanks to tourism. I don't see that. But what I would say is tourism is affecting the social structure of Cubans. Okay. So um, this kind of, it's kind of like an inverse uh, topic sentence. Tourism, however, has begun to eat away at this delicately balanced social system. I would say that this pair, this last sentence incorporates that the most. Um, okay, let's uh, take a look at the list of headings and see which one's the closest. So think that tourism is having uh, some kind of an effect on uh, the delicately balanced system of people. Okay, which one do you think is the closest match to that? All right, so Romaine says, I think the best one here is short on money, uh, long on health is the closest match. You have to find the closest match. Okay. Okay. Oas says it's seven. Puiti says I think it's four is the closest match. All right, now, um, yeah, I would say that of all of these, um, probably number four, because it says that Cubans aren't very wealthy in quite a few parts in that paragraph, but it says that they have a pretty good life, which is being affected now by tourism, right? So I would say four. And here um, we're given the example. IELTS will often do this where they give you the example for the second paragraph or the third one. And the answer is four. So now you know that you're on the right path. Okay. So if you chose four, then you're like, okay, I'm on the right path here. Short on money, long on health. All right. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. We'll get the hang of it. Okay, keep that order in mind. You want to get list of headings correct because it will help you with the other questions also. Uh, here we go. Keep reading with me. So in order to extract as much money from tourists as possible, the Cuban government instituted a parallel currency for non-Cubans. The Cuban convertible peso was created in 1994 but came into wide usage in 2004. Valued on par with the American dollar, this peso is worth 25 times more than the lower value Cuban peso. Because the convertible peso is overwhelmingly used in tourist locations, the people who work in these locations, hotels, bars, restaurants, receive far more of these than people outside of the main tourist spots. Workers in the hospitality industry can then take the convertible peso to the bank and get Cuban pesos at a rate of approximately 25 to 1. 
This may sound unproblematic, but this is not the case. The problem is that the Cubans who have access to the convertible peso are at a huge advantage over those who do not. Because the monthly salary for Cubans is so low, even a small monthly bump in the income of those in the hospitality industry creates shockwaves in the economy. What results is a two-tiered economy, those who have access to the convertible peso and those who do not. Okay, what is this paragraph about? What is, it, what is this paragraph talking about? What do you think is the best way? So Abhishek says it's about two currencies in Cuba, the convertible peso and uh, the Cuban peso, right? Abhishek, I think that's pretty good. Oh, it says dealing with pesos mandatory for tourists. I think that's part of it, Ois, but I think it's more concise to say there's two currencies in operation in Cuba. So Preeti says uh, two currencies and how it causes an uh, unbalance in the economy. Okay, good Preeti. That's a good way to summarize that, I think, as well. So two forms of the economy. Yeah. Vekjan says a new currency uh, results in two-tiered economy. Yeah, two currencies, definitely two currencies, right? I think that should definitely be a part of it. All right, so let's uh, take a look. Any possible choices there where it says there's two kind of currencies in the country? So which one do you think is the right answer? Okay. Okay, Oh, it says number two, Puiti says number four, Janil says, or sorry, number six. Uh, Janil says number six, Leia says number six. Yeah, so be careful, Ois, not to get lost in details. That's one of the biggest dangers to get these wrong. Um, the correct answer is number six, two monetary systems, the Cuban peso and the convertible peso. Um saying that uh, it's number two, a currency on par with the American dollar, that's only a part of the paragraph. So it has to be number six. Okay, number six is the correct answer. It's a two monetary system in one country. Monetary means money. Okay, but two. So if you're thinking about this, take out the TA and, it, and it's money. So two monetary system in the country. Okay, so the correct answer for that one is number six. Okay, let's keep going. D, so just nice and smooth, just like that, okay? Here we go. Uh, but the problem is worse than this. Because professionals make just the meager monthly salary, they have a huge incentive to give up medicine and move to a tourist center. There, they can adopt any sort of occupation, taxi driver, bartender, even a hotel room cleaner, and make far more money than they did as a doctor. This is clearly not in the interest of the country. So, what is this paragraph about? What is this paragraph about? Keep it simple, be concise. So what's happening in Cuba? What is this paragraph emphasizing? Should be quite clear. Uh, Puiti says conflicting professionalism. Ois says earning good money from tourism. I, I don't think that the emphasis here is earning good money from tourism. Okay, Bekjan says changing occupations. Um, Leia says problems with the status. So uh, members, if we're doing this really well, we should be coming up with similar types of um, answers, okay? And I would say, so notice here, the paragraph starts with, but the problem is worse than this. So, and you even have this hyphen here. That means that there's an explanation coming here. 
So right away, I should realize that this paragraph is explaining a problem. It's explaining the problem that Cubans are losing professionals because of tourism. So Cuba loses professionals because of the incentives of tourism. Okay. So, oh, it's, it's not just the negative effects on medicine, but it's the negative effects of tourism on professionals in Cuba. Is everybody else picking that up here? So this is basically your topic here, your topic sentence. So it's the problem. What's the problem? And then the rest of it describes the problem that Cuba is losing professionals because of tourism. Okay. So again, um, one good way to practice these list of headings is to do it in a group and try to come up with the same answers, ideally. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, let's go to the top and let's try to figure out which one of these is uh, the closest to uh, Cuba uh, losing professionals because of tourism. Yeah, there you go. So incentives to leave professional occupations. Yeah, everybody gets it. And I mean, it's almost word for word what I said, right? So number one is definitely the right answer here. Now, I mean, I would still just skim through these, making sure there isn't a better answer, but you will realize that this is the best answer. So number one. Okay, uh, good. So let's keep going. So try to really work hard to have consensus uh, meaning to have agreement in the answers. Okay, here we go. So E, a second major problem with the increase in tourism is the pressure it exerts on what is a very limited food production system, made even more difficult by the embargo with the United States. Cuba has been suffering increasingly significant food shortages. Because the tourist resorts buy up all the good produce and meat and can afford to outspend the average Cuban due to their income from the convertible peso, the Cuban people are left with an ever-decreasing amount of quality of foodstuffs. Without further intervention by the state, Cuba may soon face crisis-level food shortages due in large part to the influx of tourists to the island. Okay, what is this paragraph about? So what are we dealing with here? Okay. Uh, oh, it says it's shortage of food due to tourism. Yeah. Shortage of food for the Cuban people. Yeah, I agree. So this is one of those ones that I think it's a little bit easier to figure out. Um, not all of them are as, uh, as easy. Uh, which one of these matches the closest? So now see how all of you have consensus, okay? That's really what you want, okay? So Ois says shortage of food due to tourism. Puiti says shortage of food due to tourism. Abhishek says because of tourism, there's a shortage of food. Uh, Bagchan says tourists cause food shortages. So that's the kind of consensus that you should have when you read these. And of course, 10 is correct. Okay. Uh, it's not just tourists outspend locals causing food shortages. Uh, that's only part of it for Dobbs. Um, the more complete answer is tourism causes food shortages because the resorts are buying up all of the food and people with that convertible peso. So it's not just the tourism outspending that's causing food shortages, it's a more complicated problem. And the paragraph describes that in detail, so be careful, okay? All right, that's why you want to always answer on your own first, because if you're just searching for the answer, it's easy to make this mistake. But when you answer on your own and you cho choose the closest one, you will choose this one. Okay, hope that's clear. All right, so let's keep going. I believe this is the last paragraph. Let's do this. So it is difficult to say what can be done to help solve the pressures that tourism places on the Cuban economy. One step that may be taken soon is to reunify the two currencies, 
either by collapsing the convertible peso back into the regular peso or by creating a new single currency. The status quo is clearly unsustainable and tourism is always increasing. So it is clear that something must be done before a crisis engulfs the Cuban people. Okay, what is this paragraph about? What's this paragraph about? Again, let's try to have a similar kind of idea here. Abhishek says, how to reduce the pressures of tourism on Cuba? Uh, Puiti says, steps to help the problem of tourism. Uh, Puiti, I think that's a good answer. Yeah, so solutions to the pressures of tourism. Yeah, Bekjan says, ways to overcome the problem. Romain says a solution uh, to better the situation. Okay, so notice how many of you are now having consensus. You're saying it's a solution or fixing this problem. Good, solving the problems. Leia, very nice. Okay, fantastic. So you got the hang of it for the last few paragraphs. Okay, but that's what you want to do. So when you practice this at home, students, regularly, you'll get the hang of it from the beginning. Uh, as opposed to just the last couple paragraphs, okay? So uh, which uh, one of these do you think is the closest match? I think it's quite clear. Yeah, very good. Ankar, nice joining in as well with the same kind of idea. Definitely measures that can be taken to help the problem. So solutions to the situation of this problem. Very, very good. Okay, excellent. Nicely done. Good job, everyone. Okay, cool. So now uh, we are confident with the list of headings. And to be confident with the list of headings is a really good idea because it helps us to solve the next questions faster. So which is not given? Try not to look at this uh, part here at the bottom. I wish I could just magically cover that up. But uh, here the question is, which is not given as a reason for the stagnant Cuban economy. So before we try to pick out the right answer, uh, let me ask you this question. What reasons are given for the stagnant Cuban economy? What reasons does the passage give for the Cuban economy not changing? Okay. And we know where this information is because one of the list of headings answered this question. Okay, good. For, for Dov says, one of the reasons for the stagnant Cuban economy is the embargo that's placed by the U.S. That was one. Yeah, and I remember a couple more as well. Anybody remember? Nope, tourism definitely not for Dov's. Tourism, nope, nope, not tourism. Tourism is changing. Stagnant means to remain the same or unchanged. Uh, tourism is changing the economy, so tourism would be the opposite. Okay, so um, Ankar says import-export. Let's say I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. No worries. So I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know yet. But um, I remember that one of the paragraphs was dealing with this question. Uh, which, paragraph, um, which paragraph is dealing with this information? Remember our list of headings? Okay. Uh, number three, remember this one, a shock to a stagnant economy? Here's that word stagnant again. Do you remember which one this answer uh, was correct for? Which paragraph? So this is where you can use your list of headings to help you quickly figure it out. Very good. So Jainil and Abhishek says, I think it was the first one. Oh, very good, Ferdovs. As soon as we said that, Ferdovs started to come out with the right answer as well, right? So this is your critical thinking, students. Yeah. So it was your first paragraph. So we know that, oh, yeah, okay, wait a second. This information was somewhere from that first paragraph that was dealing with the stagnant economy. And the stagnant economy highlighted the embargo that the United States put on um, Cuba since 1958. And then it also said, and a strict communist and communitarian social system. So it gives those, right? 
Ferdovs picked that up. Ferdovs says it's the social infrastructure of communism and uh, commu uh, communitarian social system where everybody's working together. Yeah, absolutely. So those are the reasons the passage gives for the economy saying staying the same. Okay. Uh, tourism has been changing the economy. Okay, it's very clear. All right, so now we can figure out the right answer. So which is not given as a reason for the stagnant Cuban economy? Trade embargo, communism, a communitarian social system, or tourism? The right answer is... Janil says D, Puiti says D, yeah. So tourism is changing, right? So careful with this not, okay? So D is the correct answer, all right? D is the correct answer. Everybody clear on that? So trade embargo by the US, it's keeping the economy and everything the same. And these two social systems as well. Okay, um, cool, next question. What can be said about Cuban salaries? So in your own words, you should be thinking, well, Cuban salaries are very, very low, right? That's one thing that we can say about them. Uh, they're not really enough for people to uh, live a luxurious uh, lifestyle to get all of their needs, right? Um, so we can say all that. We can also say that the Cuban salaries are... Um, bilateral. It means that some Cubans make a lot of money uh, while some Cubans don't make much money because some Cubans have the convertible peso and some Cubans have um, the Cuban peso. So there are big differences. That's right, Beck John. Very good. Okay. So now I can look at these and pick out the right ones. So doctor makes more. Nope. They allow for Cubans to be tourists. Nope. They are very low. They're insufficient for proper health care. Nope. So the best answer, because I said this at the very beginning, is C. Okay. It's very important, students, that you're not hoping that the correct answer pops out off of the page in your face because that leads to many wrong answers. In multiple choice, you must always think of the answer on your own first and then choose the closest match. Not stare at the answers hoping it will jump out at you. Is everybody clear on that? Okay, this is really important. I can't emphasize this enough. You're going to save marks if you do it this way. So in multiple choice questions, you must think of the answer on your own first, then pick the closest match. And the reason I say this is many students keep skimming through the answers, uh, hoping that the right answer will leap into their mind okay this often leads to incorrect answers and also confusion and frustration okay is everybody clear on that it's really important it's just, it's it is the most common mistake with multiple choice questions is people are skimming for keywords they're hoping that the right ones just gonna be like pop in your face oh that's that must be the one okay yeah. So, Janiel, you have to answer on your own first and then find the matching answer. Okay. It's really, really important. That's why I'm taking an extra second to let that really sink in. Okay. All right. So then come the true, false, not given. Okay. Then come the true, false, not given. So, um, true, false, not given. Uh, if the statement matches or agrees with the information, it's true. If it doesn't, if it opposes the information, it's false. If they don't talk about it, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. If they don't talk about it, it's not given. Okay, um, so always ask if it's important first. If, figure out if it's given. So your first step with true, false, not given is to figure out if it's given or not. 
by asking if it's important for the passage. Uh, Cuba has three separate currencies. Is it important to know how many currencies Cuba has for a passage on tourism and the economy? It is definitely important. Yes, Abhishek. So it must be given. Okay. Uh, is it import or sorry? Is it true that Cuba has three separate currencies? No, it's false. And Jainil's saying that. So it's important. It's given, and it's false. So the answer must be false. Okay. All right. Next one. Those who work in the tourism industry make more than those who do not. Is it important to know in a passage about tourism and the economy of Cuba whether or not people who work in tourism make more than those who do not? Definitely important, right? That would be really weird if that were an unimportant type of topic or question. So it must be given. So 36 is definitely given. Okay. And do they make more? Absolutely they do. Um, because they make uh, convertible pesos, which are 25 times more valuable than the Cuban peso. So it's true. Okay. Uh, number 37, access to the tourist economy encourages doctors to become entertainers. Number 37. Um, so access to the tourist economy encourages doctors to become entertainers. It means like singers or pianists. Um, is it important to know what profession doctors choose in Cuba within the, the tourist economy? Is that talked about? No, it's not important. It's too much detail, right? So that would be, uh, not given. For sure. Okay. Um, it encourages them to participate in the uh, tourist industry, but not necessarily become entertainers. Careful with these kinds of words that are too specific. So it's not important. Uh, number 38. Food shortages are caused by the embargo. Okay. Food shortages are caused by the embargo. Number 38. So does the embargo lead to food shortages? Is it important to know? Um, yes, it's important. Okay, so we're getting a little bit more specific now. Uh, do the food shortages uh, from the U.S. lead to Cuba having, or sorry, does the embargo uh, lead Cuba to having less food? It's definitely important. This one. So it's given. Okay. If you're not sure, um, again, list of headings. All right. So list of headings, which paragraph. So we remember that one of them had the answer X. Okay. Tourism causes food shortages. Uh, which paragraph was X? It's one of the last ones, right? It was either E, I think it was maybe D or E. That was X. You will see this in your answer sheet, of course. Okay. So let's hop back to E real quick. It wasn't a... Okay. So a second major problem with the increase in tourism is the pressure it exerts on what is a very limited food production system made even more difficult by the embargo with the United States. Cuba has been suffering increasingly. So I'm checking paragraph fee. I'm just checking the topic here um, because I felt a little bit unsure. I knew it was important, but I couldn't remember if that was true or false. So I decided to just have a quick look. And because I'm moving along nice and smooth, I have enough time for this, right? So I can do this. So now what is the answer? It's important and it's... True. Absolutely, Ois. Which makes sense. Uh, students, you know that an embargo means that they limit trade. If your country is not able to trade as openly as other countries, um, that's going to affect your ability to trade food as well. And the U.S. is a very, very powerful country when it places an embargo 
on another country. So um, food shortages are definitely caused by the embargo. Okay, <clears throat> and number 39, a healthcare crisis may soon face the island nation. Uh, tourism Economy Cuba talking about healthcare crisis, the hospital system, number 39. I know that they talked about a food shortage crisis, but I don't know about health care. There was a little bit of information that they have free health care. So Romaine says, yeah, that's not important to this topic. We're not talking about the Cuban health care system, so uh, not given. Okay. Uh, number 40, returning to a single currency may help stabilize the economy. Uh, is it important to think about solutions uh, for this problem of tourism and the economy? So number 40, is that important? Ferdov says, yeah, that's important, and it's true. Um, yeah, of course, that makes sense, right? So yeah, that's got to be, it's got to be true for sure. Okay, that's definitely important to the economy. That's what paragraph F was about, okay? Uh, we knew that because we kept asking, what is this paragraph about? So one really important point here before we wrap up this class, students, is did you notice how using the right strategy for each question, especially for the list of headings, uh, provides a lot of help when you're answering the other questions? Okay, I really, really hope that a lot of you realize that when we were doing this, like, oh yeah, the multiple choice and the true false not given made a lot more sense when I understood the list of headings accurately. And of course, because list of headings is the topic of each paragraph. If you can't get the clear topic of each paragraph, it's hard to get the more detailed questions later on in the passage. Okay, so you must develop the right technique and strategy for list of headings because that can really save you some scores for the rest of the passage and of course that will lead to a higher band score okay good so all of you see that all right so uh, that's my last tip of the day all right well not the day because I'll have another class here in a moment but for this class so uh, getting the list of heading questions correct and using the right strategy is very important because it will greatly uh, help to solve the following questions uh, quickly and correctly. Okay. So keep that in mind. Okay, uh, members, fantastic. We got through the whole passage. Good job. Uh, coming up in uh, about 30 minutes, uh, we will have another class, which will be task one, uh, line graph. I believe, Beck John, that you sent this line graph at some point, and I just adapted it to this class. It's about the uh, wheat export in some countries um, and the change there. So we'll go through that together. I thought that was a good question, Beck John, for a live class. So we'll do that in about 30 minutes. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for all of those watching. Check out our premium courses at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and uh, gltshelp.com for general. Lots of great tips to learn there, uh, effective strategies that work, that are proven. Hopefully I'll see all of you in half an hour for some writing, okay? All right, um, that's it for now. Uh, back in 30 minutes. I'm Adrian, bye.